Hi, my name's Lisa, and I wanted to do a short testimonial video to talk about my journey through the Thrive Programme to get over emetophobia, which is a fear of being sick. I didn't actually know I had something called emetophobia until I found the Thrive Programme. Um, all I'd found before was a lot of forums telling me how awful emetophobia was, or fear of being sick was, and that you could never get over it, and a lot of self-help help books that told you you couldn't get over it either. So I actually found the Thrive Programme out of sheer desperation, um, thinking that I would never be cured. Um, so I started the Thrive Programme a while ago, and um, here it is. And I can 100% say I'm completely, completely over it now. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I did also, at the same time, struggle with the drink problem. A lot of metaphors think this was a bit strange, but I genuinely believed that if I drank shots of strong alcohol, it would kill any bacteria in my stomach and I'd never get ill. That is a load of nonsense, just so you know, but um, it was it was an old wives' tale within my family that I took a bit far. Um, but yeah, so there is another drinking, there's another video that I've done about my drinking, but this one specifically on emetophobia. So um, I guess what I want to emphasise is I'm a real person. Um, I really did the Thrive Programme and I'm cured. And the reason I say that is that um, I did my last testimonial about 18 months ago when I'd just done the programme and was cured. And I got a few emails from people saying, are you actually cured? Like, are these videos not all fake? And you know, I don't think they're all real and it's a big con. And it kind of made me laugh because I used to do the same thing and think that it was a load of nonsense and um, that Robert obviously faked the hundreds of thousands of people that he'd got well and the hundreds of videos and the many Amazon written testimonials, which I have to say would be quite a mean feat if someone did it. But um, until I just decided to trust the program and trust that it worked, that was a big stumbling block for me. So, um, a little bit about how my life was um, when I was an active emetophobe. Um, I've still got my list from my Thrive book here, so forgive me if I read from this, but there's a lot of stuff here that I haven't done for so long that I've forgotten. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid, I used to be really frightened, like terrified of people being ill. I would run out the house, I would sit in the back of the garden and cry. Um, if someone was being sick at night, I'd put my fingers in my ears and I'd hum and I'd put music on and like just try and block it out like I couldn't deal with it. As soon as someone had been ill, I would starve myself for days. I would lie about why. I would normally say, oh, I think I've got it too. But I was just trying to go into absolute starvation mode in the hope that I wouldn't get it. Um, so my eating was quite erratic. Um, I wouldn't eat seafood in restaurants. I was really paranoid about chicken, I, I barely ate it, and if I did it had to be cremated. Um, I was funny on trains, like I'd have panic attacks between stations. It got to the point where I was so obsessive that um, on my 40 minute train journey to work from my parents' house, uh, when I was living with them f just after university, I knew exactly how many minutes there were between each train stop, so that I knew how long... I would have to wait before I could get off the train if I didn't feel well. Routinely, I would get off the train, I'd have a panic attack and get off the train um, midway through my journey and I'd have to wait for the next one, which didn't come for another half an hour. So I, was, I, I would leave the house, at, you know, an hour before I had to, just to factor that into my journey so I wasn't late for work. Um, I would always sit on the end of a row um, on planes, trains, in cinemas, so that I always had an exit. The first thing I did when I got into a, you know, a room or a social group or a restaurant was where are the toilets and where are the exits? And I would be paranoid. I hated eating out. It was, uh, it was something where my mum used to love us all going out for a meal together for someone's birthday or Christmas or an occasion or something. And she would think it's a really lovely thing to do. And the minute she suggested it, I couldn't think of anything worse because I just knew how panicky I was going to get and knew how awful it would be. Um, so I would um, always carry plastic bags with me just in case I had to be sick. I had such high social anxiety that I was so worried about making an embarrassment of myself if I was ill in front of people. So my my handbag was full of plastic bags, which was ridiculous. My boyfriend couldn't believe it when he found out. Um, I would chew lots of chewing gum because somebody told me once that it speeds up your metabolism and um, helps food pass through quicker. Like all these ridiculous things I mean you could you could find a cure for cancer on the internet if you looked hard enough and I would look for hours and go through forums and try and pick up tips for 
how to avoid being sick and how to avoid bugs and what was the strongest antibacterial hand wash I could buy and oh it was awful um, I was obsessed about washing my hands I would like I said I would have alcohol shots um, if I panicked in the hope that it would kill bacteria more often than not it made me feel more sick but it, I was I was paranoid um, I would have shots of boiling water because somebody told me once that if you have hot water it settles your stomach um, I regularly went into starvation mode when I ate out with friends um, and I was really anxious about eating out with them I would make up stories that I was on a crash diet to fit into a new dress so that they wouldn't sort of notice that I wasn't eating lots um, in all reality people don't really watch what other people are eating anyway but I was paranoid that people were going to notice that I was panicking about food um, I wouldn't sleep at night um, I was paranoid that I was going to wake up ill or I would be listening out for noises so I was completely hyper vigilant um, I'd skip meals I'd only eat if my stomach was rumbling because that meant that I was hungry and I wasn't ill but that would mean I'd wait for hours and hours and hours and hours before I'd be eating and I'd be starving to the point where I normally felt pretty ill anyway. And then I convinced myself I was ill. Um, I couldn't, I had real difficulty having boyfriends or friends over to stay the night. It would really unsettle me. And if any one of them had been ill, oh my God, I would avoid them like the plague. Like, poor things. Um, anyway, I mean, the lists go on and on and on, but I, my life was dominated by this fear. And the biggest thing was I was really frightened for anyone to know. I don't know why, but I was kind of embarrassed that I had it. I thought no one else had it. I thought it was a silly phobia to have, which it's not. But, um, you know, so actually nobody really knew. And I was sort of searching for help in secret. And now loads of my friends know it's not really a big deal, but I only told them after I've been through the Thrive program and realised it wasn't a big deal. Um, so what I tried before Thrive, I tried counselling, psychotherapy, um, I almost tried hypnotherapy, but I wimped out. Um, I, I was starting to have all kinds of health problems from not eating properly and drinking too much. Um, anyway, so like I said at the start of the video, I ended up coming across the Thrive Programme because I was desperate. It looked to me from the internet like you couldn't cure it. There was nothing coming up, and this was the first thing that came up and said you can actually cure it. And I was like, right, I have to do this. So I went to see Rob. He was absolutely great. We started working through the Thrive Programme. My stumbling blocks, well, the, the things that were definitely bad things for me is I had cripplingly low self-esteem. I mean, on the self-esteem score, I got zero when I first did it. Um, so my Thrive score when I started Thrive was 61 out of 70. It's meant to be about 15 or less if you're, you know, a happy, normal, healthy human being. Um, and mine was 61, which was pretty bad. But... A lot of that was poor self-esteem, not feeling in control of my life, desperately, like a really high desire for control, so I was desperately trying to get control over everything. And being so worried about what everyone thought of me all the time and being paranoid that people thought that I was a wreck or I was too fat or too thin or too this and too that. And Yeah, so uh, my Thrive School was, wasn't great when I started. It's now about 13, 14 out of 70, so I'm doing like so well now. Um, what parts made a difference? So I've written a few notes here because I have a tendency to waffle, as you can see, because we're now eight minutes in. Um, parts that made a difference to me. Um, definitely um, a combination of self, low self-esteem and an inherently negative attitude to everything was my big problem. Um, I just couldn't see the positive in anything when I started Thrive. But everything was miserable and everything was awful and I'd messed this up and I was terrible at this and I was an awful human being. And um, it, I, just after I started to thrive, I started seeing my boy, my current boyfriend, who I've actually went to school with him. We've known each other since we were 15 and always been really close. And he had no idea that I always, I'd, I'd always struggled with this self-esteem stuff. And he just couldn't believe how negative I could be sometimes. So Rob and I really worked on that. We worked on my catastrophizing because um, I always used to um, make a mountain out of a molehill. If I had a blip, like my blips wouldn't last an hour, they'd last about a week because I just wallowed in self pity and told myself I'd failed and I was awful and I didn't deserve to be happy and I should just die somewhere. Um, I did start, you know, before the Thrive program, I was borderline suicidal. It was just, I couldn't see how I was going to get out of it. Um, yeah, so we worked through the book um, bit by bit, my self esteem started going up. 
um, I started feeling a little bit more positive. I started recognizing my achievements. Um, I, I just woke up every morning and it, it wasn't a huge bit of progress every day. It was bit by bit. And I think that was a big thing for me is my perfectionism. I thought that once I got Thrive, I was just going to get it and life would be perfect. And that was it. And I didn't realize it was going to take a bit for me a little bit longer, but it was bit by bit every day. I put the work in when I didn't put the work in. I knew it because I would go downhill really quick. It took a lot of effort for me to keep it up every day. Um, but when I did and I started seeing improvements and my obsessive behaviour started to go, um, I just couldn't believe it. I started to feel really excited about going out for dinners um, to celebrate at the end of when I got through Thrive and I was completely over my metaphobia. And my boyfriend took me out for a meal and he took me to a seafood restaurant in London. Now, ordinarily, I would never touch seafood. Most of the stuff we ate there I'd never even had because I was so paranoid about seafood. But I went and actually ate seafood. I couldn't believe it. Since I've done the Thrive programme, I've been sick and it was fine. I was I was actually laughing by the end of it about how much I'd blown this into a big deal. Okay, it's not something I'd love to do every day. It's not exactly a pleasant experience, but I didn't blow it up into this huge drama. It was just something unpleasant that was going to go away, you know, and in 24 hours, I was fine. I'm, you know, back loving life again. Um I started taking on physical challenges. I was too frightened to go to the gym before in case I got sick there or did too much exercise that I would throw up, which is really unlikely because I'm not that motivated. But um, yeah, so I now train. I've I've met friends. We go out for dinners. Um, just everything is completely different. Like it just it's so nice to be able to sleep at night and not worry and to wake up in the morning and just feel content and to get in the shower and not be thinking, how am I feeling? Am I ill? Can I make it to work? Oh, I think I'll skip breakfast. I think I won't have a cup of tea. You know, like, and has someone at work been ill? You know, all of that's gone. I just get on with my life. I love it. I make the most of every day. I try and be positive and put my, you know, rose tinted specs on. And um, it has absolutely changed my life. I'm now training to be a Thrive Consultant myself. I'm loving the training. I can't wait to help other people in the positions that I've been in with emetophobia, drinking and, and all sorts of other stuff because I realise and I remember how low it makes you when you're not, you know, you, you're not thinking right and you're not um, processing things properly and, and everything's a struggle and you just feel really down and like you just lost your zest for life and now I kind of have that back. Uh, if I pull the door to, ignore the ironing board, but I've got all my surfing gear there because I moved to the seaside and I now... Um, surf and bodyboard i've got a medal up there which is what i got for doing a physical challenge last year i've got my canoeing rod at the back there um i've just started doing things and it's amazing so all i'd say is um for anyone that um is struggling with what i struggled with and they're not sure that it works go through all the testimonial videos there's enough of them and they're not fake these are real people like you know me and all sorts of other people who've done this program and it's changed their life you know it's it's something that is curable no matter what the online forum says my life is now amazing because i've done thrive and i've got over emetophobia i'm not a heavy drinker i make the most of my life and i'm just really really happy i don't think in my life i've ever been this happy and i can never repay rob and the thrive program enough for what they've done to change my life so i highly recommend it if you're struggling if I get the book out again with the metaphobia, buy the book. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can work through the book yourself, but if you are struggling and having any problems, find a Thrive consultant. They're all listed on the website, which is www.thriveprogram.org. Um, there's also a Facebook support group that if you struggle with any parts of the program, consultants are on there and can offer words of advice and support. So, you know, to, to help you get through the program. So, you know, don't sort of leave it and leave it and let your life continue like this. You know, do the Thrive Programme and get over it and start having a great life. All right. Thanks.